YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Ant the Barber coming back at you with another haircut tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be doing a classic comb over with a mid skin fade. I like to begin by brushing or combing out my client's hair. This time, however, I am going to saturate it so I gain a little bit more control over it. Anytime I do a comb over or this type of cut, I typically like to saturate the hair and I like to comb or brush the hair in the direction that it's going to lay when styled. So now that I have everything saturated and combed out, I'm going to begin my shear work. In this first initial cut that you're going to see me make, this one right here, I'm actually going to use it as a guide and a reference point throughout this whole haircut. So he wants a basic trim, so I'm going to be removing about half of an inch. So I made my first cut, and then once I pulled up a new section right next to that, I included a little bit of the previous section that was just cut so I could use it as a guide and a reference point. And I'm going to continue to do that throughout this whole haircut on top with the shears. Alright, so now that I'm done with my shear work, I'm going to jump into this blend. So I'm going to start off by coming in with my wall cordless detailer LI and I'm going to begin to set and create my first guideline, which is going to be my bald guideline. You are going to see me drop it towards the back. This isn't a drop fade. However, I do want this blend to complement my client's head shape. And so this is what I'm doing by creating and setting in this guideline is I'm customizing it to fit my clients look the best. So now that my bald guideline was created, I'm going to come in with my Babless Pro Foil FX02 and I'm going to completely bald out that guide. I am going to use that flick out motion when I get towards the top because I want to demonstrate a really clean smooth transition from completely bald to stubble because that's going to help this blend pop.
So sometimes my shaver tends to leave a little bit of shadow in that transition that I'm looking for from that completely bald to stubble. So I like to come in with the trimmer that I originally set that bald guideline in and I like to rake downwards like you've seen me doing. And when you rake downwards like that, it doesn't completely remove it all right away. A matter of fact, I find that it removes just enough that you could keep going at it until you get it right to where you want. And I really want this blend to pop in its transition because there's not gonna be a whole lot of room to fade. And you'll see that as we progress through the cut. So I wanna get everything to pop as much as I can. All right, so now that I got my bald guideline blended out, I'm now gonna set and create my next guideline. So I'm gonna come in with my wall metal magic clip with the lever fully open, and I'm gonna begin to set and create that guideline. You're gonna see that I'm giving myself, I'd say a little under half of an inch. Again, I just said that there's not gonna be a whole lot of space for this blend. And the reason for that is because we wanna transition him into somewhat of a more boxier shape with this haircut opposed to a rounded off shape. So the other side of this comb over doesn't get a hard part, but we want both sides to meet up and somewhat take that box shape. So I'm not gonna be removing that dense darkness that you see above this. I'm actually gonna go right into the number one guard, the one and a half, and then we're gonna blend right into that length on top. So now that my guideline was created, I'm now gonna close my lever and I'm gonna begin to blend from the bottom of this guide right back up towards the top of this guide. And little by little, as I work my way up, I'm gonna slightly open my lever. And every time that I do that, you're gonna notice that that guide's moving up with me. But that's okay because that's exactly what I'm looking for. By the time I get to the top of this guide and my lever's fully extended, it'll be completely blended out. Alright, so now that that guide's blended out, I'm going to come in with my wall number one color guard with the lever fully open and I'm going to begin to set and create my next guideline. I am going to give myself the same amount of space that I gave myself with the previous guide. That way I keep everything consistent with this blend. Once my guide is created with the lever open, you'll see that I'll close my lever and I'll begin to blend from the bottom of that guide right back up towards the top of that guide. And typically this one close tends to leave some weight behind, but that's okay because I'm going to show you how to remove that in the next step. And a lot of people ask me, why do I create the guideline with the lever open and then close the lever and blend right up to underneath where I just left off? And the answer to that is that one fully open is going to help us transition into our next guide. All 
All right, so now I wanna remove this weight that I'm showing you that that one closed left. So I like to come in with my wall half color guard with the lever fully open. And I like to begin by attacking right above the weight that I see. Again, that's right above the weight that I see. And I'm gonna use that fade down process to blend it out. So I'm gonna close my lever as needed, working my way down until that guide's completely blended out. Alright, so now that that's blended out, I'm going to come in with my wall one and a half premium guard with the lever fully open. And this time I'm not looking to set in any guide, so I am going to use that flick out motion to avoid that. However, I am going to clean up in a guide like formation and give myself the same amount of space that I gave myself with the previous guides. That way I keep everything consistent with this blend. Once I clean it up with the lever fully open, just like the previous guides, I'll close my lever and begin to blend out from the bottom of that guide right back up towards the top where I just left off with that lever fully open. And right here, what I'm really trying to avoid is rounding off my client's haircut and something that's not really visible for you to see through the camera is his head shape. It starts to take an indentation right there where I'm at and then also right towards the back above the occipital bone and so I'm really trying to avoid going too far in so I'm using a lot of flick out motion here and I'm really making sure that I'm not digging in if that makes any sense. Alright, so I'm still seeing a little bit of weight left behind from that one and a half with the lever closed. So I'm going to jump right back in with the guard underneath that, which is going to be my number one color guard. So I'm going to come in with the lever fully open and I'm going to begin to attack right above the weight that I see. And I'm going to use that fade down process to eliminate it, meaning I'm going to close my lever as needed, working my way down until that guide's completely blended out.
Alright, so in previous videos, I constantly got asked why didn't I show the side of the comb over that the hair doesn't lay on. And so I'm showing it to you guys right here. I am speeding it up, but I wanted to demonstrate that the steps are exactly the same. And again, we're trying to transition my client into a more of a box shape opposed to that round look. So the steps are exactly the same. That way the blend meets um, at the same place on both sides of the head. And once I'm done with this step work right here, I'm gonna use no more guards and I'm gonna clip her over a comb to transition that blend into that length on top. Again, so we retain that somewhat of a boxy shape. All right, so now I'm gonna begin my clipper over comb work so I could transition this blend into that length on top. So I'm coming in at the angle that I am with my comb. That way I could keep and create somewhat of a boxy shape. The shape that I keep saying that I'm trying to transition my client into. So you'll notice that we do wanna keep a lot of that length that is up there on top. However, we do want it to transition and blend well all while maintaining that shape. So I'm just coming in, you can see I'm not going crazy, I'm taking my time. And unfortunately, right here after this scene, my battery died and I didn't wanna switch it out and we were kind of running short on time. And so I didn't film myself doing my detail work. I didn't film myself doing the lineup. I didn't film myself applying product but I still felt like there was jewels in this. So if you made it this far and you got anything useful out of it, I ask that you smash that like button. And if you're new to my channel, I suggest you stick around. It's only gonna get doper from here. So I also wanted to mention, since I wasn't able to film my detail work, that after this step, after I got done with my clipper over comb, I came in and cleaned up with my wall one and a half premium guard with the lever fully open. And then I used that fade down process to cross check my whole fade, meaning I went in with the one and a half fully open and I faded down all the way to the no guard lever close to cross check my fade. So here's a look at the final cut. If you got anything useful out this, I ask that you smash that like button. If you're new to my channel, I suggest you stick around. It's only gonna get doper from here. Make sure you turn on that post notification bell so you don't miss these jewels that I'm dropping. I appreciate y'all. Be blessed and be a blessing. I'm out.